So this is Fizz 2320 Computing 2, and this is the first unit on the series of video tutorials on data visualization using the matplotlib library. And in this first part uh, of the unit, we're going to give you uh, an overall introduction to matplotlib. Before we go any further, it's worth saying that matplotlib is by no means the only library you can use in Python for data visualization, but it is probably the most widely used and most common. It's also an incredibly large library. Um, and so we're going to start off just with a very kind of simple introduction of trying to show you the minimum you need to go and do to create a plot of some data using matplotlib. And then gradually we're going to go and build up um, to get show you how you can get more control over exactly what your plot ends up looking like. So the first thing we need to go and do then is go and import NumPy um, in order that we can actually make some data to plot. Um, and then we're also going to import the matplotlib pyplot package. Uh, and so the plot imports look like that. So just as we import numpy as np by convention, the, the usual convention is to import matplotlib pyplot as plt, plot. Um, actually, matplotlib has several different ways it can be used to go and make up plots. And the uh, particular approach we're going to use is using the pyplot uh, module. Uh, and the way pyplot works, it has several functions, each of which then work with um, uh, a current figure and a current set of axes, and in some way change those figures and those axes by adding, for example, lines or labels or um, axis labels and legends and so forth. The pyplot module then keeps track of which figure and which uh, uh, set of axes you're currently working with uh, in order to go and make the changes as you go along. So this is actually quite a uh, intuitive and, and certainly a very simple approach when you're working on just one plot. Um, but as you add more plots, and you get into greater complexity, then sometimes it gets a little bit um, tricky to follow exactly which plot you're out modifying as you go along. And in later units, we'll go and show you some of the ways you can work with multiple plots and multiple sets of axes at the same time. So uh, we need to go make some data to start with. So we'll just, um, to start with, just create a couple of arrays, um, each of 181 points, so an X and a Y uh, data array. And you'll see that Y data array is basically just a, a set of trig functions. In order to go and plot that data, what you might need to go and do is, well, first of all, ask matplotlib to make you a figure in which you're going to contain the, the plot. Um, this step actually is optional. If you forget to go and do it, the matplotlib will go and create a new figure if you haven't already got one uh, uh, active already. And then you need to ask matplotlib to create a new set of axes for you um, in order to define a coordinate system on which you're going to do your plot. And again, if you skip, uh, miss that step out, then matplotlib will go and do that for you if there isn't already a suitable set of active uh, axes to go and plot with. Then you need to go and plot the data. And to start with, we're going to use the plot.plot .plot, uh, function for that. And then, of course, there are other things you might need to go and add to your plots, like access labels and titles and a legend and so on. So um, to make this the uh, completely minimal example, we're going to skip out all of the optional steps. And that therefore means that all we're left with is just one line, plot.plot, .plot, um, and then uh, X and Y values. Uh, and as you can see, that then produces a, a plot um, uh, in a frame, and it gives you an X and Y axis with some labels on it, with some uh, uh, scales on it. So by default, if you're working in a Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab, the matplotlib will decide you've finished with the uh, figure whenever you uh, leave that the input cell which had your plotting in it. It is possible to tell the notebook to um, keep going with the current figure um, until you explicitly tell it to start a new one. Um, that in Jupyter Lab requires an extension which is not installed by default. Um, and in uh, unit two of this series, I'll show you another way uh, inside a notebook that you can uh, come back to a, a previous figure that you've been working on. OK, so a good plot, of course, should have axis labels, a title and a legend, as we said. And so a slightly more complete example um, would look like this. 
And so on that first line, we first of all call plot.figure and that creates a new figure. Um, and in fact, we've assigned that new figure to the fig variable. And then we need to go and create some axes, in other words, to set up a coordinate system for us. Um, and that will also go and draw the frame and the scales when we do that. Um, and we call plot.axes uh, in this particular example. Again, later on, we'll see other ways of, of, of doing that. We then have the same um, plot dot plot line, but now I've added an extra keyword argument to give that plot a label, which we can then use when we come to have a, a legend. And then I've got three calls to plot dot x label, plot dot y label, and plot dot title, which I think is fairly self-explanatory, set the x, y label, axis labels, and give the plot a title. Um, and then finally, we call plot.legend, um, and it, uh, by default, works out what you've just plotted and gives you a legend and positions it somewhere conveniently on your plot for you. Um, and so that looks like a slightly more complete sort of plot now. Um, however, uh, it, all it's done is just drawn you a one single blue line. By default, if you plot several different data sets on the same axes, then matplotlib will um, cycle through a, a predefined set of colors. So to try and give each line a different color. Um, so we can go and see this. If we first of all create a, a slightly more complicated set of data. So I'm gonna um, replace my, my Y variable now with a two dimensional array, which consists of uh, rows where I've calculated the same um, trig function, but now I'm just um, adding a phase term to those trig calls, and each row of that two-dimensional array has a different phase to it. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a little helper function here that's just going to do the labels and the title and optionally the legend um, for our plots as well. And this is just to save repeating the same lines over and over again. So in the examples going from the, forward from this point, you'll see I just do a call to label plot, and you can think it's just doing those X, Y labels, the title, and, and possibly also doing the legend for us. Okay, so having done that, I can now start a new figure and then um, just uh, set up a little for loop to cycle through all the, um, the different uh, sets of data I've just created with different phases and plot them all out. And you can see what it's gone and done is it's given every plot a different color. Um, and this is using the built-in selection of colors it cycles through. Um, and it will eventually go and repeat um, if you go far enough through. Um, but you can see it gives you a, a reasonably nice display. Um, and again, I've asked it to, when I've labeled the plots, it's put the legend in. And now it's decided that the bottom left corner was the best place to go and put that legend. Of course, you might not want to go and stick with matplotlib's default idea of how your plot should look. So um, by default, matplotlib will just plot line plots. Matplotlib plot.plot plot will just plot line plots um, uh, where the data points are joined together with solid straight lines. Um, you can very quickly tell it to try and format those data sets in slightly different ways by adding a third parameter to the plot dot plot call. So as well as the X and the Y coordinates, you add another one, which is a string, and that string is gonna code up um, how you can set things like the marker style and uh, the line style and the color. So first of all, we'll look at the way you can code different styles of line. And that's simply by making that string contain a different punctuation uh, symbols. So if that contains a hyphen, then it tells matplotlib you want a solid line. If it's a colon, then it'll give you uh, a dotted line. If it's two hyphens, it'll be a dashed line. And if it's a hyphen and a full stop, it'll give you a, a dot dash, or I suppose a dash dot uh, line. Um, and so we can quickly make a plot up that shows all of those. So again, very similar to the previous example, I start a new figure. I'm now working my way through um, a list of those four different line styles and plotting them each in turn. Um, there's also, I'm using the enumerate function 
Uh, so as well as getting each of those items in the list in turn, I also get an integer which goes up, which allows me to select a different column, a different row of the of the data to plot each time. And so here you can see the four different line styles from the solid line, the dots, the dashes, and the dash dot uh, line style. Uh, and again, the colors here are being chosen by matplotlib on its own. Of course, you might not want to plot a line plot. You might want to make a scatter plot where you just have data markers. Um, and you can go and control uh, both the size and the shape of the markers. Um, with the uh, formatting string, you can control the shape very easily. And again, it's just a question of including the right uh, code uh, symbol, um, so a letter or a, a punctuation mark, to go and select the right uh, type of data marker. So um, again, the full selection is given here on this slide, um, but we can have a look at some um, a selection of them um, by making up a plot. Um, and you can see here, again, the same as we did before, we're just working our way through uh, a set of the different uh, codes um, and using each one. And you can see in the legend, it shows you what shape you get um, for each marker style. Um, and within that, you see there's, there's a certain amount of variation. So the comma gives you the smallest possible uh, marker, and then the uh, full stop gives you the next smallest. And then after that, things like pluses and crosses tend to visually look quite small. And then the, the solid uh, shapes tend to look kind of rather chunkier. And then finally, we can also control the color. And the color is done by giving a, a code letter that corresponds to the correct color. And mostly it's fairly straightforward. The only thing to remember is that black is a K um, rather than a B because the B is for blue. Um, uh, and so you can uh, quickly choose which color. And again, you see, we're just cycling through the different colors here, um, plotting each one out. And within that, that third format string parameter, you can mix um, all of them together. So you can mix together the line color, the marker style, and the line style. If you put them in that order, so you put, first of all, the color, then the marker style, and then the line style. So for example, a red line with circles would be coded up as RO hyphen. So red for red, O for the circles, and the hyphen for a line um, with it as well. Um, or for example, if you had G capital H colon, that would be green hexagons with a dotted line. And here you can see how we're combining them together. Um, uh, what I've actually done on this plot, just to make the markers stand a little bit more clearly, is in fact, I've only plotted um, every fourth data point I have. So that's why I've got the square brackets colon colon four after the X and the Y. Uh, and I say that's purely just to mean that there are slightly fewer data markers. You've got more chance of seeing uh, what they actually look like. If you need more complicated control um, over the color choice and the marker style and the line style, then instead of using that format string as the, the third parameter, you can use separate keyword arguments for line style marker and color. And there are also keyword parameters to control the marker size and the line width. And so as a quick example, um, here I've done a plot where I've told it to go and use um, the Greek letter psi as the marker. Um, it's got a, a slightly uh, complicated dash dot uh, line style. I've changed the line width. I've also changed the color. Um, and again, you see I'm using the, the name of the color. So in this case, teal for that kind of bluey green color. Um, and I've also set the marker size. Um, and so I've got sort of control over all the aspects of the plot. 